Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. For today's deck we've got quite a spicy one. We're playing Jeskai Splinter Twin with the One Ring in it. So quite a lot going on. I got this list off of Pokemoki. I played against them in a league a few days back or a week or so ago and I was really impressed by the deck list and they kindly let me have it. So here we are. You can check out their Twitter account which will be in the description below as well. So what is our deck trying to do? Well, we are a Jeskai control deck for the most part. We've, you know, we've got all the good things. You know, we've got Teferis, we've got Forces, we've got other Forces, we've got Prismatic Endings, or Plowshares, or the Cantrips you want. We've even got a couple of Stifle thrown there as well, and a couple of Supreme Verdicts. So we're trying to keep the board clear, and we've got these Lorien Reveals as well, which are good early and great late, so very potent. So we've just got, like, a good suite of blue-white spells. But then we have... Three Deceiver Exarch to go with our one ring. So with the one ring, we can draw some cards, immediately untap it, draw some more cards. And basically, at some point, we'll be able to put a Splinter Twin on our Deceiver Exarch. And we'll have so many cards to defend it that we won't have to worry about what our opponent's doing. So we're not racing to the combo. We're just a controller that has a combo finish, which is something I really enjoy. We also have a Singleton Fire and Ice, which is interesting. Doing two damage divided as you choose among one or two targets seems pretty good for killing orcs, as it turns out. And the tapping permanence and drawing a card is going to come up. You know, Merit Lage tokens, other big creatures or whatever. You can tap down someone's important land for a turn. Plenty of options with that. And that's more or less what we've got going on here. Our mana base is all actual colour producing lands for what we're trying to achieve here. We've not got any weird sort of colourless tech because... You know, we're a three-color deck. We've got things like Supreme Verdict and Splinter Twin in there, so we don't really want to get too out of control with that. And we want lots of islands so we can tutor with the Lauren Revealed. We also have the Mystic Sanctuary, which is a pretty good island to tutor for as well. We do have one Caracas, but this is on color, so that's not a problem. And that's pretty much it for the main deck. To Ferry means that if you have this in play, your opponent can't interact with your combo because you flash in your Receiver X Arc at their end step. They're not allowed to play any spells. You untap, you put Splinter Twin on it. Game over. So we do have a quick way that we can race if we need to, as well as just the grinding control that we are probably going to try and play for most of the games. Sideward-wise, we've got a lot of tools to get through here. So we've got Pyroblasts, pretty obvious. We're playing red anyway, so we may as well get the joy of playing Pyroblast. We have two Hydroblast, which has a decent amount of targets in the meta. We've got some Flutterstorm against a lot of these combo decks, as well as also protecting our own combo if that's a thing we're interested in doing. We've got a nice grinded card in Savine's Reclamation. So this lets us return cards to the battlefield from our graveyard. And we get that twice because it's got flashback. So we can rebuy our Teferi, which is quite a key linchpin to our strategy often. We've got Narset, just really good in matchups where we're going to need more card advantage and being able to stop our opponent drawing is going to be excellent. We've got a fourth Eolingus in case we want another win condition. We've got Lavinia, which can stop all sorts of things. It can stop the Cascade things going on. It's really good against Storm decks. Just a, a nice card with a lot of utility there. A Brotherhood's End. This is a red-red card that we want to cast on turn three. Which uh, is interesting when we could be running something like Meltdown. But the thing is, this is flexible. So it can hit creatures or Planeswalkers. So the flexibility is what we're indexing into with the double red pip there. And I think that's fine. We've got a lot of fetches. We can we can probably do this. We've got a Dress Down. Good against Doomsday and various other decks that are playing scary turns with their individual permanents. We can also strip away Urza Saga tokens, and Urza Saga tokens tend to be quite awkward to deal with in a lot of control decks, so Dress Down helps us there. We have a Sanctifier and Vec, which is an interesting one. This is a protection from black and red, 2-2 two, two for 2. Whenever it enters the battlefield, you exile all black or red cards from all graveyards, and then Whenever a black or red permanent spell or a card not on the battlefield would be put into a graveyard, exile it. So, an interesting piece of graveyard hate, that one. And we've got a couple of search extractions to add to that. So, quite a lot of varying tools, but, you know, we're a Brainstorm Ponder One Ring deck. So, we're going to be able to find Singletons relatively well. And we can also rebuy them with Snapcaster, which we have in our deck. So, that's the list. I'm really excited to play this. I was very much a big twin player in Legacy for about 18 months or so. I was playing like blue-red twin mainly 
and I really loved it. And it was great fun. I had a wonderful time with it until the format changed and made it difficult. I've tried to play it a couple of times on the channel and it just doesn't really work anymore. So this completely new take on it with the heavy control elements in the Teferi is something that's really interesting to me. And we've actually found a way of making Deceiver Exarch a bit more interesting by having the One Ring as a thing we can untap with it and really get some sweet value going. All right. Remember to like and subscribe before watching the video, leave me a comment afterwards, check out the Patreon, Discord, etc, etc, and check out Pokemoki's Twitter. That's uh, a good plug to do, because if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be playing this deck today. So give them a follow and check out their content they post. All right, let's play some Jeskai Twin. If you're looking to play Legacy on MTGO like me, why not try Card Hoarder? They're a rental service that I personally use and I found them better than other rental services that I've used in the past. So why not give them a try? All right, they're opening hand. We can do an island ponder and try and find some stuff. There's only one land, but ponder is pretty useful. We're on the play though. It's a little greedy to keep this one, but I'm gonna go for a ponder here. If we can set up our second land, we've got a lot of stuff going on. So here is our, I think we just start off with basic island because you don't wanna get caught out by Wasteland here. All right, so now we've got excellent selection of tools. I think we can, how much do I think we're going to need this Force of Will? It's gonna be a nice thing to have in our hands. So I guess we put it this way. So we draw the Force of Will now. So we have a Force of Will if we need it. And then we also have the Brainstorm two cards down. Sorry, yeah, another Brainstorm uh, two cards down. So we can, if we don't have to play one of these spells, then we can leave that there. All right. How do we feel about whatever our opponent's doing? A Chalice of the Void where X equals 1. That's not a problem for us. We've got a uh, Prismatic Ending which can pick that off when we need to. I don't think we need to do that right now either. Our combo that we're trying to get to also dodges the Chalice. Blood Sun. Lose all lands except mana abilities. I guess we're losing our Brainstorm on top of our library. I think we'll get... Planes here, they might have Blood Moon as well. Sure, you can have a Blood Sun. Force of Negation. Do we want to Prismatic Ending their Chalice now to unlock our Plow for next turn? That might be a thing we're required to do, but if we wait, we might be able to get the Fairy Bounce going. I think we're not going to do that just yet. I don't feel under pressure yet. A Chandra Torch of Defiance. Uh, so I think we will Force of Will this. And probably pitch the Teferi here because this little combo here is what we're trying to do. And we're not a deck that they're, they're not a deck that's going to really care about Teferi being in play. So I think we'll pitch the Teferi here. Kind of feeling this one land that we kept a little bit right now. We'd love to draw some more mana, please, deck. A brainstorm that we can't cast yet. Okay, so now I think we're incentivized to hit this chalice. Alright, so next turn we can brainstorm if we have to. I think the Deceiver Exarch will go under the Force of Negation at this point. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. How annoying is this? I think we don't want them to have the Fable here. We're just trying to make sure that we're stable by the time we get our One Ring up and running. Because we found our land, we don't need to brainstorm right now. Our opponent might do something that makes us want a specific answer. Ensnaring Bridge. Sure. We have to ferry down a deck that can bounce this. Also, we're trying to kill them with a 1-4. All right, let's have a little brainstorm up here. Make sure we secure our next land drop. Excellent. So I think we put the brainstorm and then the ponder. And we'll draw the ponder. And we'll deploy our one ring. Oh, wait, we can't do that because of the blood sun. Whoops. All right. Uh, bit of a misstep there. Okay, so we have a Caracas. That's helpful. For next turn so i guess we bury these this way so we have an emergency brainstorm not sure exactly what we're going to need in an emergency there but right city of traitors another blood sun sure that's fine we actually be better off these omegas of the moon uh blood moons rather than blood suns but all right so now we get to draw a bunch of cards We've already played a land for 10, so we don't necessarily need to draw right now. We can draw in our opponent's turn. Another Blood Sun. That's not really how our opponent wanted this one. This is sort of a good example of why the prison decks, like the, good, the, the best prison decks, have a bunch of threats in and they can just go and make threats. Because if you just have prison pieces, 
You don't really get anywhere. Two in Snare Bridge. Let's draw a card. We don't get to do any shuffles here because of the Blood Sun. Super Exarch. Interesting. I think I'm going to try out a Brainstorm here. A Prismatic Ending. Uh, we're going to have to power through these cards, but that's something we can do. So I'll bury this one because it doesn't do anything. So bury this one. Uh, that, that, actually, that's a pretty good pitch to Force of Will, isn't it? I think we'll keep this Prismatic Ending on top. And we'll play out our land. And our opponent's turn, we can untap our ring with the the Sea Rex arc. And then draw a bunch more cards. And that should get us close enough to comboing, I would imagine. Yeah, the turn where we kept the play strand around was a mistake. Uh, untap target opponent you control. Let's untap the one ring. And let's tap it. Alright, so we have our combo with forcible backup here. Our opponent's got two cards in hand. We need to find a red source. But we're about to draw, what, five cards this turn? And we've got a brainstorm if we need to draw more cards, although we don't want to do that if we don't have any other blue cards. All right, that's not the one. Let's draw some more cards. A red source. We found one. Red. Red. All right, so what we do is we untap the Deceiver Exarch, and then we make another copy, and we do this, and all these have haste. All right, pretty cool. So we're looking at some kind of prison-y type deal. I think this to blow up all of their little annoying permanents is going to be useful. The Hydroblasts are going to have a decent amount of activity here. I don't think we want Lavinia. I don't think we want Fourth Eolingus here. Narset is kind of interesting just because it's a way of us digging for specific answers. And they've shown that they're probably a slower approach to prison. We're not looking at a bunch of goblins and rabble masters here, unless their hand was a very odd one. Uh, Stifle, I think, is a is one I'm happy to get rid of here. Do we want to keep our counter spells? The Lorien Revealed is going to be useful, considering our fetch lands are somewhat awkward if they're all the blood suns in the world. Fire Ice, they haven't shown us the goblins, so I'm inclined to take that out. And I think that's how we're going to sideboard here. We cannot keep this opening hand. This hand is much better. We can keep this. And one of these things has got to go back. I think for now it's the uh, the uh, the Seaver Exarch. And we'll just rely on having these lovely spells that we have right now. It's a chalice for one, I suspect. It's a chalice for one. We're going to play out our Scalding Tarn. This is so that we can crack it in response to a Blood Sun. Or Blood Moon, potentially. There's a City of Traitors. We're going to see a Khan here. A Chromox. Right. So they're going to have three cards left in hand and then play something here, presumably. Seaman Spirit Guide. Chandra, that can't be counted. Yeah, that can't be counted. Sure. So we're going to get an Emblem here, which is going to ping us for one a turn. Which is going to mount up a little bit. So we'll crack this end step. I think we just get a basic island here. And then we're going to Island Cycle. I think we're going to get a Tundra. Oh, uh, not a Tundra, a Volcanic Island to go with our Tundra. Yes, yeah, so we take a ping here. A Ponder that we can't cast. So we'll put our Tundra here. Well, we can cast it. It will just get counted immediately. So we're going to get a second emblem from this Chandra now. Then next turn we can Teferi bounce the Chalice. And that gives us Hydroblast on their Chandra. But we're going to need to work towards a combo before all this ticks down and gets us. Khan the Great Creator. That's got to go, I'm afraid. Yeah, we take two this turn, three the next turn. So it's just kind of growing and growing. Okay, so here's our Teferi. One, two, three. Four. I think we need to get rid of this Chalice. And we're trying to draw into the combo before we die to the Chandra. So I'm just going to redeploy this chalice, but we counter it on the way down. We have to make a decision about what we pitch here. I think we have to... All right, let's do the emblem first. I think we have to save the ponder because we need to find a way out of this game. Oh, I pitched the wrong one there. Whoops. 
I meant to keep the Ponder, not the Hydroblaster. Whoopsie daisy. Oh, it's been a little while since I've done a misclick there. So I guess we were G1. Splinter Twin. Okay, so we can plus this. We can destroy this to stop the damage coming across and increasing. And we can play our land out. So we need a splint, we need a Deceiver Exarch, and we need another red source to win the game. And we've got four turns before we die to the emblems. Now our opponent's probably going to play some other scary things. Like it's going to kill Artifari, that's fine. they got no cards in hand. We should have that Ponderer instead of that Hydroblast. Things can still work out for us here. A Flood of Strands, that's our other red source. So we just need the Deceiver Exarch. We've got... We're going to take three on the next turn, and then three on the turn after. So we have two draw steps to put this together. Uh, I think we crack this now for the very marginal thinning it provides. This was our last draw step, right? Because we take three, and then we can't possibly run the next turn. Um, we can't draw a Snapcaster or anything and plow it because we don't have that available. All right, sure, we're going to... So our opponent definitely is not on the old creature plan at all here. So I'm even less into these source to plowshares. So what do we want here if we're not running plows? Uh, the Lavinia can definitely help here, I think. Maybe we're supposed to have that before. And Flusterstorm doesn't really have the most merit here. It can sometimes do some things. Fire at least can shoot a Planeswalker like a Khan if it goes low for some reason. Or we want the Narset to help dig us to our combo pieces. And Flusterstorm isn't really going to counterspell anything here. We keep in a Plow just in case we need a quick jolt of life. I think that's going to be better than these plow these uh, swords because we did see the Fable of Mirror Breaker. So I think keeping in these three is fine. There is an argument for fire ice over swords, but we might need to like swords our own snapcaster to stay alive for another turn. All right. Um, yeah, this one seems good. We'll keep this. Okay, we'll also lead out on the scoring town in case our opponent plays a turn one blood sum. We don't want to have one of our lands effectively wasted. Oh, no play from our opponent. That's exciting. All right, so we're going to play Lavinia, and that should hopefully jam our opponent up a whole bunch. I think we want. I think we want a basic island, just in case our opponent does have blood moons. It's certainly not necessarily sure whether they will have moons if they just got the suns. But we already have one red source, and that feels like... Alright, uh, my game had a little crash, and I quickly reloaded it, and apparently I clicked on the Brainstorm instead of the Lavinia. Um, I don't know if that was whilst it was crashing or what, but that is certainly not what I was trying to cast here. So we really jammed ourselves up. I guess we'll put back this Mystic Sanctuary and a Plains. Yeah, so it taps both of our lands w as well. And then untapped one of our lands after we resolved our Brainstorm. That was very weird. So yeah, so now we're going to get hit by a Trinisphere unless we want to Force of Will this. Do we want to Force of Will this? I think we do. Yep, so they wouldn't have been able to cast this if things went the way they were supposed to. I think we do want the Lavinia here. It should stop them from casting other things. If we'd have had this like we were supposed to. Right. So we cast this. Okay. This time it seems to have worked. And we've got a plow that we can hold up. And then next turn we can start one ringing and that should be enough. You know, it's very peculiar. Okay. We attacks here. And play our volcanic island. Jam the one ring. Right. We didn't draw a force of will. Got to Ferry though, that's quite a nice one. Transfer means we can't just spam a bunch of cards that we've drawn from the One Ring, but we're just trying to find our specific cards that actually cost three and four mana at this point. So they can't cast a Chandra here because they've lost a land, and the Lavinia is going to stop that from happening. They also can't do a Shatter Skull Smashing here because that would be convert mana cost four on the stack, and we only have three lands. Opponent keeps trying to pay costs. Okay. An ensnaring bridge. I do not think that is the spell they wanted to cast. But we'll find out. Let's draw two cards. Uh, so we have a Trinosphere. We can bounce this. And then Ponder. Force of Will is quite nice. 
kind of a ponder here first. Uh, Deceiver Exarch is certainly one of the pieces of the puzzle here, isn't it? So we'll leave this ponder on top. And then we'll play out this flood drive in case we want to shuffle away that ponder. I don't think we will, but we'll see. Actually, we might shuffle away the ponder here because we're just going to rely on the one ring to get the work done here. We're just going to draw a whole bunch of cards like we did in the earlier game. Our opponents can't really spam their hand out due to Lavinia. Kind of makes their Sinus Spirit Guide somewhat useless. There's the Trinisphere again. We are not going to target this with a Force of Will because we want to keep our Deceiver Exarch because I believe we can just win the game with it. We've got the Teferi to lock them out of spells. A Lotus Field. This isn't very good versus Lavinia because this kind of... If they're casting multiple spells, but now they can't cast anything. They can, uh, everything costs three. No, it costs more, doesn't it? But it's still got the same mana value. Right, so we'll crack this in our upkeep. We'll go and get another red source. We'll take a little bit of damage here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, we don't want to... I don't think we need this Force of Will either. Let's play a Tundra. It's plus our Teferi. So we'd have to discard if we draw with the One Ring now. So we're going to bash with our little guy here. And then in their turn, we're going to draw with the One Ring, untap it in the end step, draw some more. We can also Force of Will potentially here. If something really bad happens, because we've got six mana. A Fable of the Mirror Break here. I don't think we care about that. Like the treasures don't actually do anything under Lavinia. It stops Lavinia from attacking. That's about it. Let's draw some cards. Let's play the Zerex Arc. Let's draw some more cards. We can draw some more cards and just try and win the game here. Yeah, I think that's a good plan. I'm going to take a hit for five of this, but we're drawing a lot of cards. Still didn't find the thing we're looking for. Interesting. Let's see what we found. We found a Splinter Twin. Uh, we want to play our land first so we can cast a Force of Will. Red. Red. 1-1. One, one. This isn't too bad on Magic Online because you can save the targets. Alright. So we managed to get there. We had a, a little technical error there. We had a mistake in a previous game against the Blood Sun. But we, our deck just feels really powerful. I really like this deck so far feels strong let's go to round two we're on the play for round two our hand only has one land in this is a mulligan yeah we got brainstorm to fix it up we got a little bit of protection we got a lorian revealed which we might not have to cycle we'll keep this i think we're inclined to get rid of one of the lands because the lorian revealed can be a land if we need one and between that and the brainstorm i think we're going to be fine on mana i'd rather Make sure we have a decent chunk of interaction underneath us. So we'll play this one out with the intention of getting a basic island. Unless we can get a jewel. Because this one doesn't get other stuff. So we just want to be able to get a basic island off this. Alright. We can just play another fetch land here. Now we're going to try and do a brainstorm. Because we want to have a land. We want to make our land drop next turn. Our opponent is representing Bowmasters. Right, so let me just get a snow-covered island here. And rather than brainstorming, I'm going to Lorien Revealed here. And we're going to get a Tundra. Again, we just want to keep making our land drops. If our opponent plays a Bowmasters, then we can brainstorm in response. If I don't play anything, then I'm a little bit more cautious about how I want to use this brainstorm. All right. So now we have an opportunity to brainstorm without worrying about Bowmasters, so we can fire this off. A Stifle, you say? Oh, Delightfully devilish, Seymour. Um, so we can Stifle this fetch land to try and brainstorm lock them for a turn. And then we can put the, put the ring on top, because then they can't thought seize it away, because they might have black mana. You can ponder opponents, and then we're going to untap drawing this ring and mess you up with our massive draw capabilities we chose not to shuffle interesting a delighted halfling sure and no play interesting all right so we can just force through a ring here 
with well we've only got one force because the force of negation only works on our opponent's turn um what are we supposed to get here we're going to need a second red at some point are we supposed to get the plateau so we can have a second white or we just want another volk i think we just want the white here we'll force the will pitching stifle if they interact with us now if we stick the ring we're in great shape all right we appear to be in great shape let's just draw a card okay we get to draw loads of cards next turn yeah our deck feels really sweet i'm liking this caracas cracking the polluted delta the stifle in our deck can also stifle a one ring trigger if it's got a load of counters on it for us for one turn so it can be just like a, a gain seven or whatever what is this interesting color combination oh, they're just going to end okay so i think we say no to this all righty oh wow it's a lot of interesting things do we want to prismatic end their delighted halfling i don't think so i think now we know our opponent doesn't have a count spell are we supposed to deceiver exarch this now to draw some cards this does expose this to a we don't care if this gets exposed to a source of plowshares we just want to be able to draw a bunch more cards all right so we have a fire ice is that a thing we want to use anything with here i don't think so a brainstorm from our opponent so i think if we get to untap with the ring it's game over okay our opponent agrees it's game over there all right so our opponent's like 60 card black blue white green so dark bant what do you want for that if they're playing mana dorks the lavinia can sometimes do some stuff here Pyroblasts are going to be good. We didn't see any red, so I don't really want that. We've got Brainstorms and things, so we want our Narset. Flusterstorm can help us fight over getting the ring into play, and once it's in play, we're in good shape. Depends where on the spectrum they are in terms of Bant stuff. I think we might want some Surgicals to deal with our opponent's Uros, that I'm suspecting are very much in their deck. I don't really like these Stifles that much. So that's an easy cut. But the rest of it is very hard. Our deck feels pretty great, to be honest. I don't really know. I don't think we need Supreme Verdicts. And then if we want these Surgicals, what do we want? Uh, Fire Ice is kind of okay here. But I think the other tools we're getting are just better. And then if we want this other Surgical, we need to find something to cut. Um... Like, we're using Force of Wills here to force through our ring. Which is just going to be really powerful. So I do think we want the Force of Wills here. The question is, do we want the full four and the two Force of Negations? I think we can probably trim one for the Surgic Extraction, just so we don't have to deal with an array. I'm going to try like this. Like, they have Mana Dorks, but they're probably going to have a lot of lands in their deck, so I don't think Lavinia is going to really be at its best here. Island Ponder... We've got some removal. We've got another ponder. We've got the one ring. If we can put that card into play, we do get to win the game. If we, uh, well, if we untap with it, we usually win the game. Okay. It's quite the Magic the Gathering card. And we've got the plow for a bowmasters that might get in the way of our ring being really good. Okay. Do we want a basic island here? Our opponent definitely has the possibility to be playing Wastelands. These decks quite often do. So we will go for this ponder we just want to make sure okay double ring is really nice a carpet of flowers that's a good one that is a good one it's uh okay so we're gonna get a brainstorm of this so the next card down is a land i'm just gonna pass here things could definitely run away from us here whoa it's a fairy I imagine this is just plussing here rather than just trying to get a card. I think they'd rather have the ability to bounce a ring out of play. No, they just want a card. Interesting. Actually, there is our flooded strand. Our opponent can jam a bowmasters into us. I don't think that's the end of the world if they hit us with one now. Okay. Uh, Force of negation not doing anything here. Don't really want the brainstorm anymore. I think we'll leave this splinter twin on top and draw this. And then we can Lorien revealed for a land in a minute. And then play a one ring, get a bunch of 
interaction out from our opponent, play another one ring, get a bunch of interaction out from our opponent, and then maybe try and deceiver X like them for the win. We do have to like hang our deceiver X like out there. Right, Teferi's plussing. It's classic ponder. We don't get to do anything about any of this because the Teferi's there. Not that we really have anything to do. We just have to remember to cycle. An Uro. Yep. We were expecting you at some point, Uro. We've got a decent chunk of removal in hand for this. But it's a very strong grinding engine. Deafening silence, you say. Interesting. Right, so we get a volcanic here. This one gets a plateau. I'm not expecting this to resolve. I'm expecting this to be two cards out from our opponent's hand. Sure, force negation and a backup to fairy. All right, we get to do the same play next turn. Deafening silence is kind of an awkward one with the with what we've got going because the Teferi in play means we get one spell per turn cycle. They can have two. Obviously, creatures don't count towards that spell, so we can get Deceiver Exarch, but he has to come in at sorcery speed, which is not really where you want the old Deceiver Exarch to be coming in. But, so there's zero. So we have to make a decision if we're playing the one ring or if we're killing the euro. I think we're just going to play the one ring. Like if it sticks, it's so much better. And if their Teferi wants to deal with it, they have to lose their Teferi, which opens us up to doing other things. Can I have a one ring, please? An instant speed ponder looking for an answer. Well, that means you can't answer it because of deafening silence, because that's how that spell works. It's symmetrical. So we get protection for a turn. Let's draw a card. Force of negation. Not a great card, that one. But if our opponent wants to Teferi this, They'll lose their Teferi, and this gives us a chance to plough our opponent's Uro, and also means that we can deploy in it to see Rex like instant speed next turn. A brainstorm. So this is our opponent's only spell for the turn. So we're going to get to untap with the ring unless they bounce it with Teferi right now. So underground C. Okay. I did not want to bounce our ring. Interesting. They can cast a spell in our turn at like a sorcery speed spell, but at instant speed because of Teferi. Draw some cards. An Orcish Bowmasters. Yeah, it's a little bit awkward. So they get to ping us for two here. Oh, they got another one. They do. Okay, they get to ping us for another two here. Hmm, I think we are. Go and tap the ring. I don't necessarily think we're going to be drawing with it, but it's a nice option to have still. So let's plough this Uro, this mountain, and pass. So we might just be able to just play the combo and our opponent won't, might not have anything. But they do have the option of bouncing our Deceiver Exact like this turn. Which means they get in for quite a lot of damage. The next turn we can make the same play we just did. But with a plow on their army instead. This looks like 5 mana. What is this going to be? I dread to think. A prismatic ending on our little friend. Sure. I feel our opponent has turned the corner on this one in a pretty sizable fashion. Teferi and Blue Mirrors is pretty gross. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we die on our next turn. Our fetch land is switched off. How are we supposed to win the game? We can play another ring. Uh, we can't kill both of these because of the deafening silence. I think our opponent's just got us here. They've got us in the squeeze. All right. Do you want to do anything differently? I think just being on the play is quite... A big advantage. Maybe we do want this fire ice. Think about force of wills because of how gross the Teferi is in the matchup. Maybe we do want the force of will. But Pyroblast is so good here. It's just better than force of will. I don't really think we have the space to cut. The only thing is, do we need these prismatic endings? They can kill planeswalkers, but so can the Pyroblasts. Maybe we'll try it without the endings. Sure. I think we're going to give this a whirl. His hand is fine. Bowmasters does change how good this hand looks, though. Right, so there's a Tundra. But being on the play means we get to do a, a nice full brainstorm turn before they can even deploy a Bowmasters. There's a Bayou. We're going to see a Delighted Halfling here, I suspect. A Carpet of Flowers. Sure. That's a pretty good card in this matchup. we got a Ponder as well. Sure. All right. Let's start off with a brainstorm. We have a combo here. We can put this. We also have enough lands right in front of us to make this combo work. 
and put these two brainstorms on top and then deploy a scalding tarn. I don't think we can just like raw dog this combo. We're gonna have to be careful about how we approach it. And ponder, we also have a choice. Uh, do we get a plateau with our scalding tarn perhaps? Delighted halfling, sure. What have they got to follow up with? Another one? Another one. So we have this brainstorm and there's another brainstorm on top after this. I don't really want to keep drawing these brainstorms. Uh, but if we fetch a plateau with this, that's probably okay. So this volcanic island and pass. I'm tempted to jam this Deceiver Exarch again step and see if we can get anything out of our opponent. What is this nonsense? That's a lot of mana. The one ring. Okay. So trying to jam this Deceiver Exarch now. Not going to work amazingly for us. Because they have protection from everything. Hmm, that change what we want to do here. We'll fire off a brainstorm. We know there's a brainstorm underneath it. Sure, you can draw a card. Uh, Lorien revealed. It's kind of nice. These brainstorms just feel really scary right now. Sure, we'll do it like that. Uh, I'll draw the Lorien revealed, then shuck away the other brainstorm. So because our opponent uh, doesn't have that many actual lands in play, doesn't want to get this plateau going, I think. Let's see what I can get out with this one ring. A force of will. Sure. But next turn cycle is when we get to potentially go. But we're going to have to try and beat all of these cards our opponent is uh, throwing around. We don't have any proper white mana yet for things like plows. It feels like our opponent is just going to get there with their one ring and we're not. I think the Banshell shell is really strong. Surprised more people aren't playing it right now. Like uncountable Uros, uncountable One Ring is, is pretty strong. Our opponents opted to go into black for Bowmasters rather than going for the red for Minsk and Boo. But I think they're both pretty valid. Okay. I think we'll start out with a Ponder. Plow is pretty nice here. A Flusterstorm. Also pretty nice here. Force of Will, again, also pretty nice. Mm. I think we bury the plow and the fluster to draw in a minute. With the intention of playing out our Sea Rex Arc in our opponent's turn and just hoping to dodge uh, some removal. I hope that one Force of Will into the Splinter Twin is going to be enough. So they're drawing in response to their carpet trigger, so they know what colour their mana they want for all their cards. Yeah. So we're kind of just all in on doing our thing now. Lorien revealed. All right, our opponent's got a lot of cards. We're not fighting over that. We're fighting over can our combo resolve? Yeah, our opponent gets some more cards here. By doing this, the end step, we at least dodge prismatic ending as the thing that our opponent could have done something with. I guess if we tap the arrow down, they don't get to put in the extra land to cast a prismatic ending. A deafening silence. Okay. Can we allow this to resolve? That is an interesting question. I think we try one of these on for size. Let's tap down the tundra here. Orcish bowmasters. So our opponent is tapped out here. If we counterspell this, we at least get to flusterstorm. Yeah, we get to Flusterstorm the, when we're playing our Twin next turn. Right. Our opponent's obviously got a whole load of cards over there. I don't think we have much choice but to try and do the thing here. Our opponent is just the superior control deck is the problem. we got much stronger controlling elements. Yep, so we lose to that. Um, do I think we can actually win this game? No, I don't think we can. Uh, is that true? Our opponent's going to draw. We can't block here. We take... All right, we'll, we'll give it one more turn in case we just draw Splinter Twin off the top. But this game should be unlosable for our opponent. Yeah, so they've... Because we've got a bunch of slots in our deck dedicated to these combo pieces, our opponent just has cards that are standalone stronger. So, you know, like Uro, for example. 
and bow masters they've just got cards that are stronger so in this particular matchup we're at a disadvantage but in a lot of matchups we're going to be like in a really great spot because we have a combo it's just they're the slightly bigger deck in terms of what they're doing control wise that usually tends to favor yeah. all right so there's a prismatic ending so now we're definitely dead um i think we need a bit more business in our hand really okay ponder counts as business uh, i think we'll put back our plateau oh, we need something that can direct the early stages of the game that's why i want to ponder this one gets us a basic island there's either be a force of negation matchup or a supreme verdict matchup all right i like it's a fairy i quite like stifle here as well but i think that's the one that goes on the bottom and then it's a teferi then it's the force i think the option to force of negation or force of will on my opponent's turn is going to be helpful okay they didn't do an end of turn in two so maybe they're not that flavor okay they're a red deck with plus stain myrins they could be a painter deck okay i don't know if we want to have the stifle on top of our deck so i'm going to play out flood of strand and then we get as much time as possible to choose whether or not we want that to be a thing right so they're cracking their bloodstained mire an underground sea a brainstorm all right our opponent might just be some sort of grixis control that it just happens to have drawn their mountain but leaning out on the bloodstained mire is definitely a, a potent thing to do because it makes your opponent think that you could be a reanimator when our opponent's much more likely to be a slower controlling a deck here narset part reveals no, we can't allow that. All right, a force. Are we getting rid of our Teferi to get rid of this Narset in the hopes that our one ring can carry the day? I think so. So now we don't want the Stifle. So in our upkeep, we'll crack our Flooded Strand. I'm going to get a Tundra, I think, here. A Brainstorm, you say. All right, let's see if we can find... Okay, that's not quite the action we're looking for, is it? So we'll bury one of these... Volcanic Islands, and I guess we put the ring on top so it doesn't get discarded from our hand. And play out this Volcanic. Next turn we drop the ring, hopefully our opponent doesn't have any response to it. We've managed to grind through one of their counter spells already. But they're not casting spells, they've got to have something. Then we get a plateau here. I've got a feeling our opponent's got a force of negation here. Or a Bowmasters. A brainstorming response. Sure. If they leave open Bowmaster's banner, we won't pop our ring this turn. Do we get to resolve our one ring? Doesn't feel like we're going to. Our opponent's going to pay some costs. Okay, they're playing a Bowmaster's preemptively. Sure, that's smart. That means we don't get any timings where we can respond with the one ring. So we can draw now, and this doesn't get to ping anything anyway. Because we have protection from our opponent. And we can't be thought seized either. Right, so they, what they'll do here is they'll ping their own army, and as it gets pinged, it also grows. So, oh, they ping themselves. Interesting. Because state-based effects aren't checked until the Orcish Bowmaster's ability finishes resolving. At that point, the Orc, Orc army will be a 2-2 with one damage on it. So we've got three damage there. A ponder. We do need to be careful about using our one ring, obviously, because the Bowmasters can be a bit of an issue here. But we've got Plows, Ending, Fire Ice... These will get rid of the Bowmasters and unlock our ring. And if we can get through a few turns of drawing cards with the one ring, it should be very difficult to lose the game. A ponder. Am I willing to take one damage from this ponder? I think I am. Well, it's two damage, isn't it, because of the Bowmasters. Right, so we found a plow and an ending here. So we will put these on top in this way. Probably gets to ping us for one. Sure. Then we will plow this Bowmasters. Just try and draw some cards. They got another Bowmasters. They do not. Okay. Right. And then we'll end this Bowmasters here. This uh, Orc army. And we can start the carousel of value whirling along. We do have two blanks in hand right now. But these can immediately turn into win conditions. A brainstorm. Also, in this matchup, because we are the white deck, we get the Teferi. So that's quite good. But they get a hand disruption, like Thought Season and things. Which are also good. And there's going to be a ring as well. Sovereign the Mirthless. Alright, so this does 
In the top card ground, you may reveal it library, put your hand if you do lose, like, equal to his mana value. Or you get a guy. Sure. You've got a guy. Source to plowshares. Draw some more cards. Stifle and another plow. Okay, I think I'm willing to plow this creature. Especially when we have a second plow kicking around. And I think we'll pass the turn here. We can Mystic Sanctuary something on top of our library here. So a brainstorm would probably be quite a good one. Uh, sure, I'm going to look at top library and lose some life. Baleful Strix. A brainstorm. Yep. So I think we get Mystic Sanctuary and put Brainstorm on top of our library. Although, in a world of Bowmasters, is that smart? Hmm. We do have a plow for a Bowmaster, so we can try to answer it. Three cards in our opponent's hand. You see, it's Baleful Strix. If they don't play the Strix here, it means they've got a Force of Will and Strix is their only blue card. But the fact they have played it means that that's probably not the case. Do I want to pay one mana to stop our opponent drawing a card? Is that important to me? I don't think so. So in our upkeep, we will get our Flood Strand going, get Mystic Sanctuary. I would like this Brainstorm, please. Don't have enough cards, need more. Right, let's see what happens when we activate this. They have a Bowmasters. They do not have a Bowmasters. That's quite exciting, isn't it? Let's play a Teferi here. Brazen Borrower. They're just casting the Brazen Borrower, sure. So I think we can plow this borrower, brainstorm, shuffle away some of these cards. Uh, I like the force of will. I don't like all of these lands. I don't think we need two of these. Um, so put away the tarn. We'll crack this now. We're going to get a blue source. Uh, probably going to be a tundra here. How many red sources do we have? Two. Do you want a third red source or a third white source? Uh, probably the third white source. I don't think our opponent's going to wasteland us here. Um, we can present, prevent one life here, but I don't think that's a problem. We're going to stifle our own ring trigger here. So we're going to take one. We've got a force of will. Sure, you can look at top card of your library, little Sorin. What is it going to be? A basic island. That does not cause me fear. It's going to come at us or Teferi. I think it's coming at us. Yes. Correctly identified. I'm just going to be a Ponder. Another Baleful Strix. It's fine, I guess. We're planning to win the game in the very near future. A Ponder. So we're going to draw a bunch of cards with this ring. We're going to stifle it, draw a bunch of cards with the ring, probably drop another ring. And maybe a Deceiver Exarch if we can draw one. And then we should be relatively sewn up, I would say. Mr. Teferi going to do a whole lot of work. Just a straight up Lightning Bolt in our face here. That's going to put us to two. Then we'll pitch this Plague Engineer. Sure, what's this going to name? I'm curious. Wizard. So that's naming Snapcaster preemptively. We got some stuff, but one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, what's important to us, to us here? So we could try and do the Stifle trick again, but that does lose to a Force of Will potentially, but we have the uh, to a thought seize, but we have the force of will for that. We could just wrath their board and rely on the stifle to get us there. I don't hate that. So white, white, blue, any color. So we play this out. We could always bounce our ring instead, but I think the stifle play is good enough. Our opponent's got one card in hand. Is the stifle good enough, or is that playing with fire? I think it's good enough. Let's hope I haven't made a mistake and died to a Thoughtseize. Oh, it'd have to be multiple Thoughtseize. Or Thoughtseize Lightning Bolt. There's some combination here. They revealed a Polluted Delta. Okay. That's good news for us. Stifle that. Let's draw a bunch of cards. Let's deploy this ring. Uh, or do we just minus R to Fairy on the ring instead? That's probably fine. How many lands that don't hurt us here? Is it just the mountain? It is just the mountain we have here. Okay. I like lands that do not hurt us. So we want one, two, three mana for Splinter Twin for Pest. Then we have this. All right, I think we play this just to dodge various things our opponent could have here. 
We're just using this as a fog. We're not going to tap it to it for anything. We don't need to. Our hand has got all the tools we require, I believe. Uh, we must discard some cards. All right, so we will discard land, 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 ring, brainstorm. Currently blue cards for ponder, split one. Right, I think our opponent sees what is going to happen here. This is the control matchup where I think we have the right tools to win this one. To ferry being very much the right tool. Right, so they've just got a fetch land. Probably not going to be good enough here. I should not cast a mage. And try to get the brainstorm there, sure. We have a load of counter magic. But we have a piece of counter magic. We can always get some cards with our ring if we really want them. But the Teferi basically means that we don't need counter magic. Unless they're thought seizing us. But they can't because of the one ring. So yeah, we have every we have every line covered, I think. I guess the one thing they could do here is lightning bolt R to ferry. A bit of a strix, that doesn't do it. So I have like lightning bolt and then two other removal spells that hit an X4. That seems difficult for them to have. Colligan's command. They're turning a Baleful Strix to their hand. And they're shooting the Teferi. But the Teferi is doing its job already. Sure, we take zero damage from the ring. Plus this. Red. Red. One, two. Okay, our opponent wants to make us click through it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Right, so I think we have enough now. Tap with all creatures. Now we've also got a fire ice that can finish him off as well. All right, our opponent made that play that play, made us play that out, so we, there's a lot less time on our clock, which is awkward for sure. So I like these pyroblasts. I like this narset. Uh, Hydroblast is okay here. We've seen Colligan's command. Probably not going to see lightning bolts. These are ones that oh, they've gone over the way over here, haven't they? These are ones that are certainly playable. I think Fourth Eolingus might be okay, but it could be a bit risky at the same time. Plus Storm to help force our stuff through seems like a good idea. I think one Lavinia, I think they're going to be very easy to kill that one. Do you want these Sanctifier and Vex? I don't know if uh, the, the Savings Reclamation, I don't know if we have the time to play this is the problem. Um, so, what do I not like here? I'm not big into Stifle. I think I'd rather have Pyroblast than Stifle. Uh, Fire Ice kills August Bowmaster, I think we have to keep that in. Prismatic Ending also kills the Bowmasters. Maybe we can trim Force of Will because that gives us a Narset, which is just another must answer spell. And then if we want this Fluster Storm, which I think we do, we're going to need to find another slot for it. Is that going to be a Prismatic Ending going? I think so. Prismatic Ending isn't that amazing here. It's okay. We could play something like a, a Dress Down. So that we can turn off Bowmasters for a turn and have like a big drawing turn. Uh, I don't think this is a game about the Supreme Verdicts actually. So let's have this Force of Will back in. And we get a card. Do we want the four Theolingus? Because it can close the game quite quickly if we end up in that sort of situation. Or do we want the Prismatic Ending? I think we want the four Theolingus just because of the amount of time on the clock. I think we need to make sure we have some relatively expedient win conditions. Our opponent's got a lot of time up on us because our combo takes a while to click through. Um, I think we can keep this one. These games tend to be a little bit slower and we have three massive payoff cards that have to be answered. And we do have a force negation if our opponent has a massive payoff card of their own, but they don't have things like Teferi in their deck. So right, we'll play out the Scalding Tarn. We can crack it for an island if we need to. Like if our opponent plays something that might stop us from cracking. All right, Pluto Delta. Fire Ice. Don't hear that one. This means it's probably getting a volcanic. Draw a land? We did not draw a land. That's really irritating. Uh, okay, I guess we have to go to clean up here. Let's get rid of the one ring. We've got another one. Snap, cast a mage. Yuck. Oh, yeah, we're just breaking on land here. That's really sad. All right, let me just get rid of a snap caster here. Sure. Just a lightning bolt to the face. A sorcery speed lightning bolt to the face. Okay, we drew a land. That changes things. So we want a volcanic. And we want just another volcanic here. I think we might do. 
Can I have a Teferi, please? Doing some Scald and Tarnish shenanigans. Rare Mental Blast. Sure. I think that's worth fighting over. I think we'd rather have the One Ring doing its thing instead of the Teferi. Because the One Ring can find us Teferis. But we have to be pretty careful with our clock here. And Narset. I do not like Narset here. Let's hit this with the... I think we Force of Will this, actually. Because we can actually hard cast the Force of Negation next turn. If we draw a land, though, we can just slam the One Ring and hope it does stuff. We don't have the time to, to play cautiously, I don't think. Yeah. Oh, we're just in. All right. I'd like to draw a blue card, please. We drew a card that makes blue mana. Not quite. We have a plow for the Bowmasters when that shows up. Now we're just racing to a combo finish here. But we have four Theolingus, which can do some real work, too. Check one this turn. Swords to Plowshares. I'd like to play out this Tundra. I'd like to activate this One Ring. Do you have a Bowmasters over there? Feels like they might. Let's plow this. Shall we take one? They get a 1-1. One, one. We draw two cards. A Ponder. This is our blue card, but we can just hard cast that anyway. We are looking for combo pieces. Force of Negation to Fairy Time Raveler. Um... We go Force of Negation, then the Force of Will, then the Teferi. Say no to this. Play this. Bounce their guy. A Lightning Bolt at our face. Sure. They got another Lightning Bolt. They do. Interesting. Okay. Let's bounce this guy. So you got Force of Will. We're going to have to deal with our One Ring at some point. And Narset Path prevails. I do not want this to happen, I don't think. I'll say no to that one. Our opponent got a Lightning Bolt. Force of Negation. We might lose to our own One Ring here. I am going to tap it. Cast a Brainstorm. Okay, I guess we're putting... We can't really shuffle without using Lorien Revealed, but that's fine. So we put these two fetch lands that we can't really use away. And we will... Cycle this. Uh, can we just get a Tundra? It's fine. Let's cast this. Brainstorm. Uh, I suppose we're putting back some lands here. Casting a Ponder. Deceiver Exarch is okay. Uh, we played land yet this time, I can't remember. Uh, Deceiver Exarch gets us towards winning the game, but we kind of need to not lose the game. Um, yeah, we hadn't played a land yet. That was correct. Okay, so then we ponder again. Any order, shuffle. Okay. We haven't left ourselves up a Pyroblast here. But we get to draw five cards next turn, and we go to one life. Right, we can actually draw nine cards, right? No, ten cards. One for our turn, four for the first ring, and then five for the next ring. And that's going to find us an answer. To our own ring and then we can try and beat our opponent <laughs> yikes shouldered edict that's kind of an annoying one i don't think it's worth us i don't think that's worth us fighting over this puts us to one let's draw some cards to ferry time raveler uh so we want to play out a land first so we can pyroblast to make sure that our to ferry lives so we can hard cast force of negation and pyroblast Let's get rid of this one ring. All right. We're not dead to ourselves. You can throw away a lot of lands in our discard step here. All right. We have creatures covered with plow. We have spells covered with force and negation. Pyroblast can fight back counter spells. We basically just need to dodge double lightning bolt this turn. Snap, cast a mage. This gets them uh, one of the things. So we will counter the spell, which is blue. Now we'll get them a lightning bolt, which would kill us. We could say we could force of negation that lightning bolt instead, but then we have a two one, so we may as well just hit the two one, because otherwise we got other problems. A plague engineer, that's fine. We have two plows. All right, we'll make ourselves see Rex arc, untap our planes, we'll plow our opponent's creature. A ponder. Can we find a way to win the game? Maybe not right now. But this is pretty good. 
We don't have the most time though, so that's something we need to be aware of. Uh, I guess we'll take this. Uh, is it Flush Storm? It's probably the Brainstorm, isn't it? And plus this. We get attacks. We get that one damage in. Do we have a Force of Negation that we can fire off here? A thought Seize. Interesting. Let's cast a Brainstorm here. Uh, we have a Splinter Twin that we can put on top of our library. So that's okay. And we have this Force of Negation that we don't really want to cast on the Thought Seize. Um, I guess we put the ring and then splinter twin if our opponent's got another lightning bolt then we die splinter twin all right our opponent's scooping because they know that we can play out in three minutes so that was a real grind but i think the white cards are so powerful in the mirror of like control mirrors so as you saw when our opponent had a teferi in the previous round it just completely hosed us out and likewise we did the same to our opponent here uh the biggest threat to us was our own one ring as well all right, I don't think our opponent was running the ring either, which another trump card we had. Okay, let's go to round four. We are two and one. On the play for round four, we have Supreme Verdict if they're a creature matchup or a force of will if they're not. So this seems fine. We've got a brainstorm to fix our hands in a bit. Seems all right to me. I'd like to draw another land, ideally a blue land or a fetch land, because then we can get a max power brainstorm when the time comes. A Misty Rainforest and a Pass. Doesn't really give me any more indication what our opponent's up to. I don't think we need to brainstorm yet. I'm doing our next turn to hit our third land drop. A Wasteland. Not a big lover of that. I think for the purposes of this I'm going to get a basic island and then brainstorm now whilst we can pay around some sort of days because we need to make sure we hit our next land drop. Kind of telegraphing what's happening but all right, this is fine, I would say. Um, I think the One Ring might be a bit of a pipe dream for a little bit. My opponent's not committing to the board yet. I think I'll put this ending on top. So we have the One Ring on top. We can choose if we want to keep it there or not before we go to our next draw step because we have a fetch land. A Tundra is just going to be another Bant matchup. Uh, do we cast a Brainstorm here? We're looking for land. Which means we might be able to slam a Teferi next turn. Alright, so we found the One Ring. So we'll put the One Ring back down here. And a Prismatic Ending there. And then we'll crack this. For, I think it has to be a Volcanic Island. Alright, so we found a Teferi. Which we can just slam and ruin our opponent's day with, in theory. I think we get a Tundra here. Or do we get a Plateau? We can't get a Plateau with this one, can we? No, we can but the plateau is already in the bin, that's why it's not here. Uh, I think we just get the tundra. And I'm down for slamming this guy. I'll protect it with a force of will supreme verdict here. What have you got, opponent? White mana. And orcish bowmasters. Do I care about orcish bowmasters? Not especially. Okay, they were trying to bait, I think. The Teferi is the much stronger prize than stopping their bowmasters here. Plus is one. This goes to five. If they have another Baymasters, they get to take our Teferi out, and that's really bad for us. Tropical Island. Prismatic ending on our Teferi, I think. Sure. We didn't see white mana before, and there it is. Okay. All right. What is our plan? I think we're going to block. We're going to play to see Rexar and try and block their Baymasters in combat. Does that change things now we have a force of will that we might be interested in? I don't think so. I think we just want to try and block the Baymasters in combat. That gives us a potential draw to win the game. We'll tap them off their white source. They had a plow. Okay. Unfortunate for us. A little bit of island cycling. We can also do some island cycling. Or we can hold this up for force of will. Um, I think... How much do I care about Baymasters right now? It just makes all of our following draws so bad if it's still in play. Like, we can't draw Brainstorm, we can't draw Ponder and get stuff going. If we don't have to use this Force of Will, then we'll Lorient Reveal, because that gives us enough mana to cast a One Ring if we draw it, which can just pull us miles ahead of this game. It's a Fairy Time Raveler. I don't think we're beating that, so let's say no to it. We got Veil of Summer over there? No. Okay. A Brainstorm. I think the reason they didn't cast a Brainstorm first. It's because they might have us pegged as a potential days deck. 
So they wanted to keep the manor open to make it more likely there to fairy resolved. Because we're on a bit of a brew here, so. Right, so we've drawn the brainstorm. Stat cast an age, plow. Uh yeah, this is pretty awkward, isn't it? So we'll bury these two. And we'll pass a turn. We don't have a fetch land. We next turn we can snap cast a brainstorm if we want to. That doesn't feel amazing. It's gonna be an Uro. It is an Uro. Okay, we're on a, we're up against a dark band deck again, like the one that smashed us earlier. So might be in for a rough time. I don't think we want to hit this, and we can plow it, plow the Uro next turn. The one ring. Well, you might be good at some point. But that point is definitely not now. A wasteland. That's horrible news for us. All right. I think it's time to play Snapcaster Brainstorm here. I think this is actually worth just trading off here, as sad as that is. Here comes the Euro. Cast this Brainstorm. Jeez. Uh, we're in a lot of trouble. Is what I've discovered here. Uh, I don't think we have a way of winning this game. Let's save our time. So, we're on to this old chestnut again. So, pyroblasts we wanted. Decisive extractions for Uro seem pretty relevant. Narset seems great here. Flusterstorm seems like it's going to be able to mess with some of the things quite nicely. Do we want... I don't think we want the, the big sweepers of the... Supreme Verdicts, I think they can go. And Stifle isn't going to be that helpful here, so they can go. And then if we want to find two more slots for these things, where are we going to find them? Deck is hard to sideboard with, I'd say. Um, ending does kill Bowmasters. And we kind of struggle a little bit against Bowmasters. Um, interesting. We could cut like a cantrip because they're bad against bowmasters. That seems a bit weird. Maybe we are trimming the ending, or the ending can kill Teferi that our opponent has as well. Maybe we're supposed to cut Force of Will so not two for wanting ourselves as much. And play more of a control y game here. Yeah. This matchup was very tough last time. I'm expecting it to be similarly tough now. Well, we have our combo. We have some interaction. We also have some basics to work on. For the early game, at least. I love nothing more than four and five colored decks wasteland in me. It's, uh, it's my favorite hobby. <laughs> All right. Tropical Island. We're going to see a Ponder. No, nope, we're going to see a Delighted Halfling. Sure. All right. This will find us. And we could go and get a non basic land here. So we can go and get the Plateau and then fire this Delighted Halfling. We'll use the Plow later on when it's more efficient and can hit bigger creatures. But we've got two mana this turn. I don't think we're cycling Lorien Revealed right then. Brainstorm. So what we can do next turn is we can play C-Rex Arc, untap one of our lands, cycle for the red source, for the fourth mana, which is another red source, and try and go. If we think that's going to be useful for us. It's an option we have. There is a Plains. I think our opponent has a Swords to Plowshares in their hand. That is my expert analysis of how things look. So I think we play this mountain. It means if they have something like a carpet of flowers, it's not as bad. So they're going to be cycling a Lorien revealed here. There it is. We've got an underground sea. There's our underground sea. I am down for casting this and seeing what we get out of our opponent. Let's tap down their planes. Let's see how they want to handle this situation. Interesting. How much are they baiting us in here? I guess if this doesn't work, we can Lorien reveal next turn, and that's not the end of the world. So this wants to be a Tundra, I believe. I don't think this is going to work. I think we're going to get blown out here. But we're going to get some cards out of our opponent, and then we're going to gas up with the Lorien revealed. Was this D Decay? Trophy? Trophy. So that exchange ends up being a two for two, technically, right? Because we, we spent two cards, but we got a plane, so it only cost us one card, and our opponent played one card. So it's not the end of the world. Let's play this out. I think we want to leave up the Tundra here. So we go. Lorien reveal, please. We can plow Bowmasters. There's the Bowmasters. 
Let's plow that bow masters. So we do get our three cards maybe? Or has our opponent got a fluster storm? Okay, they've got a brainstorm, they're looking for something. I'm surprised they didn't do that in response to the plow. If you're gonna cast it. Because if you have fluster storms in your deck, you might be able to counter the Lorien revealed and the the plow. Can I have three cards? Alright, now we are looking okay again. We're kind of at parity, but we have the one ring, which is pretty phenomenal as a card. Green and white. And they're cracking a Misty Rainforest. Another Underground Sea. A to Fairy. That's a very annoying card. They're going up or down with it. They haven't done anything with it yet. Okay, they're going for a bounce, but bouncing nothing. That makes me want to play the one ring this turn. Oh, we're in. That's big news. Let's have a draw. And we've got a land here. Do want to try and prismatic ending this to fairy right now? I think we do. Um, we got two white sources, three white sources, two red sources. So I think we get a volcanic here. Okay, so we want. Red mana, blue mana, white mana. Get out of here, Teferi. Maybe. Okay. So next time we get to draw loads of cards. And uh, I think we can start pulling ahead. Maybe. Four mana. A wasteland. I don't care about the wasteland right now. One, two, three, four, five. A Lorien revealed, yeah. What a card. It's like the most expensive common printer for years, I believe. It's like... Three pounds for a common or something at the moment. What a world. Right, we'll take one here, but then we get to do some gross things with the old one ring. Let's draw a card. So the next time we'll draw three cards. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six cards in hand. We go down to five, we draw three. Yes, this is fine. I want the maximum amount of information to be working with here. So let's untap our ring. Let's draw some more cards. We've got a land we can play as well. Right, so we have a land here and a bunch of counter spells. Uh, I think we crack this now. We're going to get ourselves another volcanic so we can't be wasted off of red. And I don't think we need to cast any of these spells. I think we're just going to do some counter spells and get there with our combo. Hopefully our opponent will scoop to it. And we're going to have to click through it. But if we just click through it, that's, our, that's on us for playing this deck. A Swords to Plowshares. Let's say no to Swords of Plowshares. We do have another one where that came from. So. A Leovold Emissary of Trest. Uh, I think in response to that, I would like to cast a Brainstorm. A Plow. It's kind of nice here. Prismatic Ending. A lot of tools. I don't think we need them. Um, if we're just going to let this go, we need blue cards. For, we need one blue card for our force. So we can bury a Brainstorm. And we can bury the twin on top so it can't be discarded right now. This shuts off our ring, but that's fine. We're planning on winning on our next turn. Prince has got four cards in hand. Right, I think we begin with this. What? Which of these things would annoy me? An Assassin's Trophy would be annoying. But it would probably file off if they had one. Sure. Let's have a look. Let's say no to this Assassin's Trophy. Let's see if the coast is clear. Two plows that they can't cast and an arrow. Excellent. So we'll deploy this twin. Red. Red. Blue. Red. Alright, they're not going to make us click through it. We also had the fluster storm there. So another reason we're firing off the, the surgical first is to build storm for our fluster storm if necessary. Alright. Um, that was already a post-board game. I think we like what we've got here, and we're just going to run it back. Uh, our opening hand's got some useful tools in it. Pyroblast looks particularly good. Unchecked teeth. Delighted halfling, sure. So we could ponder here. It seems worthwhile. Or we could just get rid of it. I think that's probably the safest bet here. Just stop our opponent from having... Um, advantage in this game. Right, it's our opponent's turn. Wasteland, pretty bad news for us. I won't lie. Ah, okay, okay. Maybe 
Maybe we can just get a nice little island here and have a ponder. Um, I want two of these cards. So we've got two lands underneath us now. And we've got a third one on the way from the Lorien Revealed. No play from our opponent. Okay. That gives us some breathing room. We don't really want this... Um, what's it called? Surgical Extraction. That's not really where I want to be. But if our opponent plays an Uru in their turn, then... I'm down for that. All right, Flooded Strand. It's going to be a Leovold, I suspect. How do we feel about Leovold? I think we fire off a Brainstorm. I think we're on the Surge Extraction right now. And are we trying to build up to a Splint Twin right now? We've only got 11 minutes to win this game. Maybe we are. Okay. So we'll crack this for... I think we have to get a Volcanic here. And we will counter target spell if it's blue. The old pyroblast. So we can go we can Lorien revealed for a tundra here. And then we can hold up our source plow shares. And there's only so much we can do against wastelands, to be honest. Yep, so they're having a little cycle themselves. And they're just passing in turn. A brainstorm of my very own. Go on then, play your Orcish Baymasters. I did not have one. I don't think we need this mountain. And I guess we can check out this other land. Now we're looking for business. Let's play this and we'll crack it later on. And our upkeep will crack this, get rid of those cards we don't like. I think we just want. Can't have another tundra. We do want another white source though, I think. I don't think we want it. I guess we do want a plateau here. A Teferi Time Raveler. Okay. This is a pretty good one. See, our opponent's not been doing an awful lot, so I'm curious what they have in their hand. A brainstorm from our opponent. This builds storm for our fluster storm. So you get three copies, so it should be a hard counter if they only have one thing. Can I have a sweet, sweet Teferi? So I imagine they've got a whole bunch of prismatic endings and things, so we are going to take a card here right now. It does expose it to Bowmasters, but they would have played Bowmasters if they had it, so I imagine their hand involves a prismatic ending. So I at least want to get the value on this first. All right, they're just casting a Lorien Revealed. That's fine. I think we want to protect our, our time. Maybe we're supposed to Pyroblast that, but I think I like just protecting our Teferi and just hitting the things that count. Um, okay, so we can just deploy the one ring here, and that should take over the game nicely. So we can put this Splinter Twin back. Um, I guess we put back a Pyroblast here. We're not casting out this turn, so. Plus one on this deploy this. Alright, Uncountable One Ring. Let's go. Draw a card. It's the Pyroblast we knew was on top. Shock Horror. We could make a Snapcaster and put a Splinter Twin on it and just cast loads of good spells and just have Pyroblast on tap. That's kind of gross. I know, Ray, sure. We need to be a bit careful with our clock here as well. Cracking the Misty Rainforest. We do have a force of will that will be the final word as well because they won't be able to respond. Is this going to be an attempt at a prismatic ending, maybe? Nope, they stopped tapping lands and now they're untapping them. They don't have an Uro to cast here on the backside because the Caracas doesn't tap for blue or green. Prince said, oops. Let's see what's going on here. Ah, oh, they can't have a prismatic ending for four either. Right, so I think we cast this. How? What's the life expectancy on a fluster storm right now? I'm not convinced it's very much. Sure, we get to draw some cards here. Let's plus this. Let's tap this. Some cards. I don't really like paying two life. But I don't really want our opponent to have an euro. So, oh, oh my god. My computer froze, and when I pressed the pass priority button. Awkward. All right, um, that's really jammed me up, hasn't it? Okay, I guess we have to pyroblast that uh, Uro when it comes out of the graveyard here. That is a doozy. Yeah, I might have to restart it after this. Sometimes when you play Magic Online for too long, I find it starts to lag a little bit. So maybe I'll reset it after this. Counter target spell if it's blue, please. There's a wasteland. I don't really know if they want to be popping this off or not. They've decided they do. Okay. 
So we're just going to lose two life here. Okay, we have received Rexarch. We have a Narset as well. Narset doesn't quite get us where we need to be, though. How much life are we willing to pay this turn? Uh, I think I'm willing to hit this Uro like we were supposed to do last time. Source of Plowshares, Wasteland. I can beat these things. One, two, three, four. All right. There's a Wasteland. That can take us off of a red source. But we're about to draw a lot of cards. So I think that's probably okay. I think I would like to brainstorm here. Okay, so we found our red source. Let's put these two on top. We don't care about the Lorien revealed here. We just care about whatever they're going to try and do to interfere with our Teferi. So we can snap caster something in if we need to. Delighted Halfling, we don't care about that. Uh, do we need to untap this? I guess so. Might as well draw a whole bunch more cards. So we're going to lose a bit of life here. I'm going to plus this. I'm going to play this one out. We should have a mountain on our deck. There it is. There is our combo. Now we just got to make some more guys. We've got five minutes, so we've got plenty of time to do this. Right, our opponents had enough of watching us make tokens, and they've scooped up. So, yeah, we were the ones who had the Teferi in place, so we managed to win the game. And the, it, we had Teferi, so we had the uncountable one ring, and then, you know, it all just goes wrong from there. Feels just like so hard to get back from a one ring. And our opponent didn't really have any reach that they could use either. So, yeah, we are three and one going into the final round. Very nice. I'm going to go and restart my computer and get on to the last round. Okay, we're on the play. We can't cast our spells. Let's mulligan. Hmm. This one is okay. We've got a little bit of interaction. We can use the ice to try and draw. If we can stick it to Ferry, it's probably going to be quite useful. But we have to decide what card goes back here. It's probably the Stifle, to be honest. It is an early piece of interaction we can do stuff with. But I think the overall power level of Stifle is quite weak. Now, we obviously have something we're doing with ourselves in terms of our ring activations, but we're a long way from that, so we're just going to get rid of that. We're not trying to um, get people's lands or whatever. We're not like a super tempo deck. We're going to lead out with a Arab Mesa so that we can get basic planes to cast our plow if that's a thing we need. It's good defense against an early Magus of the Moon. All right, doesn't look like it's that sort of matchup. A ponder. All right, just jamming into non-stop control matchups today. I probably took a long time to resolve that, and then sh did not shuffle. So that's interesting. Right, then we'll play out this snow-covered island, so we can continue playing on basics. Save up our fetch lands if required. Let's see what sort of opponent we have here. Now there could be like a spiral tide deck. Feels like we're about due to play against one of those. A ponder, sure. All right, we've got two Teferis, so we're going to slam them. I think we'll take a Tundra and a Volcanic. Say hello to my little friend. Teferi Time Rattler. Are we good? I just have a weird feeling that our opponent is on Spiral Tide. Right. I'm not even sure what I'm basing that on. It's just a gut feeling. Like, we still just slam this Teferi anyway, because we have another one to follow up with. We can get two for one with this one if they have a counter spell. And we can untap another island. I don't know. It feels like Spiral Tide. I don't know why. Pre and they're getting another basic island. Yeah, it's definitely Spiral Tide. No idea how I had the cold read, cold read on our opponent there, but we did. So this is the turn they can technically go off. They can cast. They can play an island, cast High Tide, tap their lands, t cast Turnabout, cast Time Spiral. It's quite a specific sequence of things, but. They've been doing some sculpting. We can tap their land next turn, which is actually quite relevant. Two mana. A merchant scroll. I absolutely told you. Spiral Tide. Had the cold read from turn one. Maybe I played against somebody playing Spiral Tide. Possibly this player with the same island art. And my brain just logged that somewhere in the deep recesses where I didn't have any conscious knowledge of it. All right, this is good. I'd rather play something other than a control matchup sort of test this deck out in different sorts of pressures I guess okay not the most exciting here I 
think I would like to draw a card. So we're representing a hard cast force of will. But we could just tap down their land and mess up their calculations right now. Let's tap down this island. They can't cast anything with it because of the Teferi. So that should take our opponent off of quite a lot of mana to begin with. Sapphire Medallion. Nice. Alright. A Mystic Sanctuary, you say. Not really getting anywhere here, are we? I think we will cast this Teferi. Keep this one. Bounce the Sapphire Medallion. Slow our opponent down for another turn. We don't have anything we even want to put on top of the Mystic Sanctuary. We're just drawing lands here. And our opponent probably knows that we don't have much. There's the Medallion again. I don't really want to fetch here because if we have a Brainstorm, we'd much rather have the fetch land. All right. Another land. Yikes. We are, we're having a bit of a time here. We've just drawn lands here. So I think we're going to lose this one. High Tide. Here it comes. All of our lands tap for loads of mana as well now. But how are we supposed to do anything when none of our cards do anything? Another High Tide. Card of Fairies. This is like an old school build. I used to like the the medallion builds. Alright. Got some more fairies going. Yep. Keep the old mana train going. So we've got three cards left in hand. They've got to have some sort of additional payoff here. Snap. Sure. They can certainly generate mana. Need like a storm of 15, I think, to get us here. 14 would probably work too. Mind's Desire for a million. Alright, let's see what they reveal. Another Mind's Desire. A Time Spiral. Okay, well if they cast a Time Spiral, then we're in. But they shouldn't really cast a Time Spiral here. We're going to see a little bit more of their deck because their build is a little bit unusual. Because they've got the medallions and stuff in. But we can just yield through this turn until they put a Time Spiral on the stack. And then we get some new cards. Okay, they've got a Brain Freeze. Storm is up to 11. So not quite lethal yet. Certainly getting there though. And they've got this other Mind's Desire, so they can definitely get there. Yeah, okay, so now they have enough Storm, we can just concede the game. We don't want them to see our deck when they mill it over. So, I would like some Pyroblasts. I would like some Surgical Extractions. I would like a Narset. Dress Down definitely has Texas, it's on the Fairy build. I'd like a Fluster Storm. And I would like the Lavinias. I do not want any of these Source to Plowshares. The Prismatic Ending is okay. It kills the Medallion. We do not need any of these Supreme Verdicts. And I don't think the Fire Ice is where we want to be either. Stifle can Stifle a Storm spell. So sign me right up for that one. So we need to find two more cuts if we want to bring all these things in. Um, having our counter spells always work is very nice. Hmm. What are we cutting here? We can't cut our counter spells. I don't think we can cut our cantrips either because they're the things that are going to find us all the good good bits and pieces. Um, Teferi seems great here. Is it the prismatic endings and we just try and ignore the medallions? I could see that. Sure, we'll try that. Yeah, we got some stuff in here that works. I'll take that. And let's lead out. I guess we lead out with our Mystic Sanctuary. All right, Force of Will, happy to see you. Glad you'd come along for the ride. A brainstorm. All right, let's see what our opponent's got. Another island. We're going to see like a Merchant Scroll. We are not. We have a lot of counter spells in our hand. We also have a threat that we can deploy. I'm going to crack this now. And I'm going to get... I think we probably want a blue land. We don't really need white for this matchup anymore. Although we, we do want to be able to cast the Lavinia. Sure. I guess we'll get Chandra here. Because I don't want any awkward timings of our opponent being able to like untap things or whatever. Because I'm not entirely sure what's on their build. Just a basic island and pass, is it? I can live with that. Alright. I think we want to try and brainstorm to hit a land here. We did hit a land. We also hit a Splinter Twin. Interesting. So we want this land. One of these cards has got to go. I think it's the Excess. 
I guess two of these cards have got to go right. So maybe it's the Exarch and the Teferi here. And we'll play this out and pass. Brainstorm at our end step. Right, it's our opponent's turn. We've got some blue spells in hand. Let's crack this for a volcanic island. Let's cast a Deceiver Exarch. How would you like them apples? And we will tap down one of their lands. Not that I think it's going to really make any difference here. A Pyro Blast. How are we supposed to try and go for it here? And then leave ourselves shields down. There's a question. We have so much disruption here. It'd be a shame to waste it. I think we just want to hold up some stuff. If we can get into a spot where we've like maybe got one or two more lands, then I'm down for that. Cloud of fairies being cycled. Sure. Schooling tarn. A dress down. That's kind of interesting. I guess we attack for one here. And then we can dress down in our opponent's turn. If they don't do anything, we can we'll put a stop in their main phase. Mind drawing an extra card. A Mystic Sanctuary. Putting a brainstorm on top. Our opponent hasn't been doing their stuff in their second main phase, so I think if they decide not to go for it, us casting a dress down in the second main phase isn't going to make a difference. Let's go for a dress down here. We want this to be gone on our turn in case we want a combo. Draw a card. A stifle. Okay. More protection. It's going to be very hard for us to lose this game in theory. But are we supposed to surgically extract one of our opponent's cards? We know they have a brainstorm in hand right now. I'm tempted to hit their brainstorm and see what we can flush out here. Because this doesn't actually cost us anything. We get a look at our opponent's hand and we can see if we can just win the game. If not, we just have all the permission in the world. So our opponent's in a little dance now of how much they put away to protect their com to like um, protect themselves from our combo. How much do they information they want to give away? Okay, they're cracking with their Misty Rainforest as well. So it's a hard cast force of will. Another brainstorm. Wow, they had two brainstorms in there. Exciting. Do we get to win the game this turn? We have a force of will. So if our opponent only has one piece of interaction, then we just go and the game is over. And we get to go to game three. Otherwise, we're going to hold up a full hand of interaction. The surgical distractions are actually in there for if our opponent casts a high tide, we try and extract all the high tides. So we've got a brainstorm, brainstorm, brainstorm. Get rid of all of those. But I think that's okay by me. Let's stick this on this guy. They've got this echoing truth in the chain of vapor. All right. Yeah, we have to work through all of their permission. I think rather than just all right. Right, ponder from our opponent. A high tide from our opponent. I think we're going for the payoffs here. A high tide from our opponent. Sure. A cloud of fairies. Sure. We're just going to wait for our opponent to make a payoff and then we're going to kill them. That's the plan anyway. Sure. Using their chain of vapor to bounce their fairy. Sure. All of our islands tap for loads of mana as well. So we can hard cast forces and flusters and all sorts. We have Mind's Desire covered, which isn't something you get to do very often. And Mind's Desire. Let's stifle this. A Pact of Negation. Okay, so we found our win condition, you say. Um, I'm just trying to work out if it's better for us to stifle this Mind's Desire trigger or counter this pact. So if we tap this land, we can hard cast a force of... We can just do a force of negation here on the pact. Another pact of negation, you say? Interesting. Our opponent's got one kind of hand, and I think it's Cloud of Fairies. So we let this resolve. And this counters their other pact. Although we can then stifle the Mind's Desire trigger here. we got loads of mana floating. They have a force of will, do they? I will Pyroblast this force of will. So now... And then what we're going to do is we're going to Flusterstorm 
targeting their mind's desire. Put this guy into play. We tap the clan fairies here. We down another Mystic Sanctuary to fetch. That's Caracas. I probably should have to pay for two pack triggers here. Is it two pack triggers or is this one? I thought it was two triggers here. Huh. Maybe not, I guess. So we'll come down and we'll hold this one back for the purposes of brainstorms. Put this island. And then we'll cast this. Draw three cards. Pretty good cards. Um, okay, I don't think we need to attack now. We're just going to win with this one ring getting it done, I think. Our opponent casting a Lorien revealed. I would like to count this for that, please. Let's draw some cards. Another one ring, you say. Tap to turn. So our guy doesn't actually have flash, but our opponent doesn't seem to notice that. A ponder, sure. Take damage from the ring. Draw two cards. Got a force of will here. We can't actually block their flying creature. So we're going to be attacking him for little bits here. We do have a snap cast that we can find, which would increase our clock a decent amount. Yeah, we might lose to damage. It's certainly possible. A Deceiver Exarch. Okay. Because we kind of wasted our thing earlier, we don't have the most amount of Splinter Twins left in our deck. We've got another ring anyway, so we can untap this and be fine. We've got Stifles in our deck still, but we've used... We used both of them, actually, haven't we? Play to Fairy. Can bounce our ring here. Snap on their creature. Okay. This is so they can try and cycle. A high tide, you say. A high tide. Three cards in hand. We know what one of them is. Another high tide. There can't be a mind's desire here. Cloud of fairies cycled. A brain freeze for a whole bunch, you say. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I think I'm going to cast a brainstorm. Um, so what are we putting back here? A couple of lands. So this is going to mill us out, but we're going to kill our opponent this turn. All right, so we're making some tokens. All right, here we go. So we're going to... That was uh, an interesting game. I'm not sure if I was right to try and bait out some of their answers without the echoing truth and things. Supposed to go for it there or not, but I don't know. Seemed we, we got there in the end. Let's go to the final round, or the final game of this round. Don't want to change anything here. I don't think so. I'm kind of interested in possibly a fourth Eolingus. Maybe instead of a dress down due to the amount of time left on the round. All right, this hand just needs some more mana. We're on the draw, so we've got another draw step, and we've got this ponder. And we can happily fetch a Volcanic here. So I'm down. I'm down for this one. Ponder from our opponents. They did not shuffle their library. Alright, let's go get ourselves a Volcanic. And get the Ponder on the road. I don't think our opponents got anything like back to basics in their deck. It's not really what they're down for. Okay, I like all of these cards. So I guess we... Mm, I suppose we bury the Strand... And then have the Tundra, which we can draw next turn. And then the Teferi. This gives us the most amount of blue cards to pitch. Cracking the scoring Tarn. A Ponder. This has been a real endurance league, this one. A Tundra. Next turn we can play a Teferi. Let's see if we get any action. A Merchant Scroll. I think we let this one go for now. A High Tide. Not a surprise. Uh, so we're going to need another red source later on. So I'm going to get this Volk. So white off of this, blue and blue. Is this something you want to fight over, opponent? If it comes down to it, we do have double force of will. All right. Would I like another card here? I think I would rather have a card. Just pad our hand. All right. We found another land. So we have the combo in two turns. We need to not die. That's That's our main priority here. Cracking the Flooded Strand. Is this go time for our opponent? There is a High Tide. I think we counterspell this High Tide. 
Pitching's not custom age. Cloud of Fairies. Um, I guess we let this draw go through first in case I draw high tide. And we can probably just do the surge extraction in our opponent's upkeep to maximize the chances of hitting our opponent's things. All right, let's do this. We just have a pretty clean route to victory here. Just on your draw step. Let's target your high tide here. Uncounterable surgical extraction. How do you feel about that opponent? I guess they could Ottawara maybe. Let's look at our opponent's grip there. Yep, yeah, so we do have this sold up, sewn up, I think. I can't see how they do anything this turn. Their spells are all sorcery speed. Because of Teferi. We just go ahead and jam the lad. Turn on your lands. Why not? Crack this. Get Tundra. Get ourselves a delicious little win. We do have enough time to click through this if our opponent makes us. Our opponent does not seem happy with the outcome of that game. All right, so we finished with a 4-1. So that's a pretty good record. And we definitely had some wobbles in terms of our decision-making at times, I think. And um, we did have... Uh, our computer crashed and cost us an ideal play in one round as well. So that's pretty annoying. Nevertheless, we finished with a 4-1, which is pretty strong. I think in that last round, maybe we're not supposed to run that Splinter Twin into the known Echoing Truth. Like, I figured we just had to kind of work through it and we could just win with the control elements, but we're actually quite shy on win conditions, so maybe that was... I don't think I would do that again, thinking about it. So, like, we took away some of their additional mana, because obviously they can't bounce anything along. Like, their fairies, they can't go again. So, I don't know. I don't like the play I made there. I think it was a mistake, but we still managed to win the game there. All right, let's talk about the deck. So this deck felt genuinely pretty strong. Now, we are a little bit light on win conditions. It is just the Deceiver Exarch combo. That is the only way we win the game, really. So that does feel like we're slightly fragile. And if we were to be playing against somebody who knew our deck configuration... That could really come back to bite us. So I would be interested in a single fourth Eolingus in the main deck, possibly over a Supreme Verdict. Like just swap the position of these two cards around. I think that would probably be the only change I would want to make because fourth Eolingus, we have two bites of the cherry with it because we're playing Mystic Sanctuary or three bites if we include the Snapcaster Mage. And I think that's probably worth doing. But yeah, other than that, everything seemed fine. I never really done much with Savine's Reclamation. It just felt like I wasn't sure where I was taking stuff out because the deck feels quite tight for what it's doing. We can't cut down on our combo really because that's the only thing we have to win the game. And like our big haymakers like this just completely turn the game and win it for you if they resolve. So we can't get rid of those. So it just seems really difficult to sideboard with some of these cards. Um, but I did like having the Narset in the sideboard. I like the Pyroblast, obviously, Extraction, Flusterdorm, uh, Lavinia. I can definitely see that being pretty useful. I've sort of seen that creeping up in play a little bit lately. Uh, makes sense. But yeah, I think this deck is really solid, actually, and I would happily play it again, although it is quite a long one to play. And uh, it's been a number of hours since I started. So it's been three and a half hours I've been recording this league, so it's quite a long one, but I do have a great love for Splinter Twin and Legacy. And this deck definitely delivers. I think uh, this is probably the best thing you can be doing with Splinter Twin and Legacy right now. I don't think it's it's close. And I, this is speaking to someone who played an awful lot of Splinter Twin non-stop for quite a while and had to put the deck down because it just didn't feel good anymore. This new build that's kind of a control deck with Splinter Twin in feels good. Uh, alternatively, if you didn't want the Supreme Verdict and you wanted a Wandering Emperor, I wouldn't mind that either. That's something that can win you the game too. But I just feel we want another win condition in our deck somewhere. Uh, I think maybe a Planeswalker, maybe Fourth Eolingus. Either of those would probably be what I would want. But yeah, this deck feels really solid. You should definitely give it a go if you're into this sort of thing. 
having an eject button from a game where you say, okay, we've got control of the game, now we actually just win the game is really nice, and the protection to fairy provides is outstanding. So, big fan of this one. I wouldn't be surprised to see more people picking it up, to be honest. It does feel like it's pretty potent, but as people know what the deck is, I think it will lose a little bit of its power, like we were saying, with the fragility of our win condition. But you could probably address that just by adding in this little card or something like that. It wouldn't take wouldn't take much to try and adjust that because you're just playing a really nice controly game here. The Stifles weren't something that impressed me a great deal. Now, we did have a game where we won because we had Stifles, but we wouldn't have made the plays that got us there if we didn't have the Stifles. So it's an interesting one. They're very good against Storm, and Mines as I being unbanned certainly doesn't hurt having these Stifles. But I think we've discussed this one enough. I think it's really good. You should check out uh, Pokemoki's Twitter, which will be in the description below. They're clearly very adept at building decks, and somebody to keep an eye on for for new decks. All right, uh, I think we're done here. So remember to like and subscribe. Check out my Patreon as well; would be lovely. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.